Okay, so we finally found our pie. It's getting closer and closer to the actual pie. So this way of generating numbers, randomly generating numbers and estimating pi is actually called Monte Carlos, which is named after a casino that a lot of mathematicians like to go to. Now, another thing we can do with this code is actually instead of finding pi, we can find the difference between the actual pi and our estimated pi to see how much closer are we getting to the real pi. For that, we're going to copy this code right here. For this specific language, um, pi is actually just capital pi and i. And we're going to do the absolute value of it to get rid of all the negatives and just convert it. So, oh, it's good. And then let's just run it. So now we get our pi, our estimated pi, and below it, it's going to be the number of how far away it is from the actual pi. And the thing we can look at now, so again, we are starting with blank, page, white, square, and we're getting more and more points. And the, close, the closer the shape gets to actual circle, the clearer the edges are, the closer our estimated pi gets to the actual pi, and the smaller the difference between the actual pi and our estimated pi gets. And then right now it's at about the difference we have here is at about 0 .03, 0 .035, so it'll keep um, getting, getting lower. lower. So as we can see, it's about 0 .01, 0 .02, and sometimes it gets really close to zero, and then we just know that we got lucky and the point got selected super close to pi. Okay, so again, for this, code we used black and gray in order to help colorblind people see the difference better but let us show you how you can actually switch colors so here we define color one as zero 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 all you have to remember is the abbreviation rgb so the first number tells you how much of red there is in the color the second one tells you how much of green there is in the number and the last one tells you how much of blue there is so that's why it's RGB, red, green, blue. So the max number of red, green, or blue there can be is 255. So if we want the color to be red, we're going to say that it's 255 of red, and then zero, black, zero blue and zero green, so we can define it as red. And if we want it to be green, we can define it as 0 of red, 255 of green, and 0 of blue. If you want to find specific RGB numbers for some colors, you can just Google it, and it's gonna, they're, they're going to give you charts. You can slide the colors across to find the color you like. So now we have our color to define as green. So that's the color inside of the circle, inside of the gray ones. So the green dots are right here. And all the colors outside of the circle, all the dots outside of the circle are red. They're right here. Okay, so as we can see, the problem, the program is taking a while to run. It's actually, if you want to get 10 times as close to actual pi, it's probably going to take hundred times longer to get to that value. Unfortunately, the program runs for a pretty long time. One of the reasons is these random numbers that we generate. Another thing is the square root. The square root is what we call it a special function. Special functions take longer to work. So, you know, it takes some time for a calculator to calculate if you use to find the square root num of a number. But this computer is actually running 60 numbers per second. So it's taking him some work. It's getting, it takes time to work through it. And one of the time, one of the ways to speed up the process of finding the digits of pi is actually to get rid of the special function and write it in a simpler form. So let's go to the black screen and see how we can do it. Okay, so we started out with this function that was the square root of x squared 
plus y squared is smaller than the radius. So how do we think we can get rid of this square root? Well, since both sides are positive, we know that the radius is positive, and then the left side's positive, right? We can square both sides. Okay, let's do that. So we're squaring our square root and our radius. What we have now is x squared plus y squared is more than radius squared. Now we don't have any special functions here because all we have is x times x plus y times y is more than radius times radius. So let's put it into our code. So we're going back to our if statement and instead of having square root of x squared plus y squared, we're just going to keep x squared plus y squared and we're gonna do radius times radius and we know that the equality still holds okay and now still this tells us the point is inside of the circle so it's still gonna use color two to point out that it's inside of the circle and otherwise it's gonna use color one okay let's run it Okay, so we still have it working. We can see again that the circle is getting formed. It's taking a little bit less time. It might be hard to realize that it is taking less time, but believe us, the com it's much easier for a computer to calculate this than to use a special function. And again, it's getting closer to pi. So our estimated pi is getting closer to 3.14 and our difference is getting smaller and smaller. Okay guys, so congratulations, you just finished the R code, you estimated the digits of pi, you got a circle, you got the difference of your pies, and we did it.